got the car all buttoned up, so I bypassed the heater core using that brass elbow for now. Um, I filled the coolant, you know, used the process to fill it and purge the air. And then I let the car run and it basically, it ran for a while, just sat here idling. I did drive it around the building a couple times, but um, just let it idle. And as it was sitting here idling, the temperature just steadily increased and increased and increased. And it got up to around two, I think it was like 214, 214 degrees. Um, and it got all the way to 214 degrees without the electric fan ever kicking on. So I just, I removed the, the little shroud, the little cover that goes here. But the electric fans never kicked on. And this car is equipped with a, like a two-stage fan. There's a, a low speed and a high speed that's supposed to kick in. And it's all, you know, it's temperature based. So I believe it's, you know, somewhere around 200 degrees or just under 200 degrees. The low speed setting is supposed to kick on. And then like 210, the high speed um, setting is supposed to kick on. So like I just said, the fan never turned on while it was sitting here idling. And the fan is actually controlled by a switch. There's a little sensor, it's that green, that little piece of green right there that isn't really in focus. So there's a little sensor that screws into the, the side tank of the radiator here. And that sensor has three wires on it. So this is what it looks like. So it's a, it's a three wire sensor. And some of these cars have two tabs on it, but the third is for the two speed switch. Um, so the quick test I ran is I unplugged, so I, I went ahead and unplugged um, the little harness from that sensor, from the coolant temperature switch. And I should be able to jump these and make the fan turn on. And if you look, there's a, let me get this out of the way. There's a solid red wire. So if I jump the red to the red with the white stripe, that's one speed. And then if I jump the red to the red with the black stripe, that's the other speed. And if that works, if I could jump those and the fan turns on both speeds, that seems to, you know, point towards the actual sensor or switch um, being bad, being defective. So I will demonstrate jumping that and the fans kicking on. And then I, I purchased a new uh, switch already and I will basically install that. And the way I'm gonna get to it easily is by removing the battery. So you have a lot more room to work. So here's the little connector that goes to the three prongs on the temperature switch. And what we should find is this little piece of wire I just have bent over. It's a, uh, look, here's the other end of it. So it's, you know, it's just a piece of wire and I'm only gonna touch the insulator of it. So what I should be able to do is jump the where that red wire comes in, which is this one in the center. And this should be the low speed connector. We should hear the fan and see the fan kick on. And now I should be able to connect the two outside tabs and hear the fan kick on the high speed. So the fan is good, the wiring to the fan is good, the signal to tell the fan to turn on seems to be the problem, and that is done by the little switch that is uh, screwed into the uh, radiator. So I am going to remove that, trying to limit the amount of coolant I'm lo losing, and then I'm going to go through the process of, again of adding coolant, removing the air, um, bleeding the air out of the system. And then start it up and let it run again. And hopefully when it gets up to, you know, 200 degrees or so, that we should hear the fans kick on. So here's the sensor in question, or the switch, right? And it's just threaded right into the coolant tank here. So this is the side of the radiator. Um, first thing is I removed the battery, which would have taken up this whole area. 
And a lot of these wires were kind of like running right over the sensor, over the switch. So you know, I just took a little bit of time just to kind of move everything over and it exposes the, the, the switch here pretty good. Um, it's a big, you know, I don't have a straight wrench to fit on this here at this particular garage. Um, so I am just gonna take a pair of like slip joint pliers and kind of try to grab on here and loosen it. Um, I'm not really about worried about, you know, damaging this sensor because I have a new one. Um, so like I said, I'm just gonna go in with a pair of slip joints and try to give it a, a little bit of a turn. So just grabbing it, grabbing it there. There, it went, it's moving. Um, so what I'm going to do is there's coolant in there, obviously, trying to minimize the coolant loss. I do have a container underneath, um, but I'm going to basically put my seal on my new sensor, spin this one out and spin the other one in as quickly as possible. So you can see coolant's already leaking. Make sure that seal stays on and in we go. So there are, here's the one that came out. Um, if you look, there's like a one and a two, and it says 87 degrees is number one. So I'm, I'm assuming stage one of the fan. And then stage two is 93 degrees. And I'm assuming that's in a Celsius or centigrade. Um, the one I replaced that I popped in there had similar markings. So sensors in, tightened it up, try not to over tighten it because I do believe I don't want to strip the housing here. I think it's plastic. I think the tanks on the side of this are plastic. Um, so I'm going to take the connector, plug it back in. Again, the three prong connector it only goes in one way. There's that little notch and uh, force this back on. It's a tight fit. There it goes. Slide the boot back onto it. There. So the boot's all back nice onto it. Time to like reassemble. Put the ball, well, reassemble. Put the battery back in. And then I am going to top off the coolant system one more time. Then start it up and keep an eye on the temperature gauge and watch it. Um, and hopefully the fans kick on. <laughs> when they're uh, supposed to. Now that everything is buttoned back up, the battery's reinstalled, the little fan cover here is installed, um, I topped off the coolant and I'm going to basically run the car for a little bit with the lid off, with the, the coolant cover off, and that's to basically let any locked air in the system escape. And then I'm just gonna let the car come up to temp, let it run, and Hopefully, at some point, I'll keep an eye on the temperature gauge on the inside. But at some point, as it you know, as it approaches 200 degrees, we should hear or see the uh, the actual fan kick on, the electric fan kick on. So I just pulled the car in and turned it off, and you could clearly hear the fan running and running in the uh, the second stage in the high mode. So. Uh, that's a good sign because that was not happening before. So now I'm pretty sure that the, the temperature switch was really the issue all along, which is what caused the overheating the first time. I'm just gonna kind of keep an eye on it, do some tests. I'm gonna do a, a combustion gas test on the uh, cooling system. I also wanna do like a pressure test just to make sure there isn't anything going on or I didn't do any damage to like the head gasket or anything like that when I when the car overheated. Um, if that all checks out and the car keeps running well, 
then I'm going to order a new heater core and new hoses, um, like the silicone ones, and redo all the hoses, um, put in the new heater core, and uh, call it a day. Declare success and move on to the next issue. Um, but that's it for today, Corrado Wise. Um, plenty more content, I'm sure, coming from this car as this becomes a daily driver, right? So we're going to daily a 30-year-old supercharged Volkswagen um, in the Northeast here. And uh, stay tuned. Like this video, subscribe to this channel for more videos about this Corrado and for some of the other projects I got going on.